Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I call up Cruz First Degree 2. Uh, this is an amendment that would prohibit U.S. participation in the creation of a vaccine passport. Uh, and let me say, I think there are a lot of Texans, I think there are a lot of Americans across the country that are very frustrated at the government responses to COVID-19. And I think the decision yesterday by the CDC to reverse its guidance and to mandate masks for vaccinated people is the kind of decision that is infuriating people across this country. I believe the CDC's decision yesterday was politics. It wasn't science. It was a decision that somehow pretends vaccines don't work. The CDC months ago rightly concluded that vaccinated people don't need to wear masks because the whole purpose of a vaccine is not to get the disease. That decision was right. The science hasn't changed. The only thing that has changed is the politics. A year and a half ago, the CDC was one of, if not the most respected scientific and medical organization in the country. Today, the credibility of the CDC is in tatters because leadership of the CDC has been willing to allow science to become politicized. We've seen Dr. Fauci take virtually every position on virtually every subject under the sun. We've seen Dr. Fauci in his emails explain his view that masks don't work and are not effective in preventing COVID-19. We've then seen Dr. Fauci change his positions over and over again. We've seen Dr. Fauci say that when he told people masks didn't work, he actually believed masks did work, but he wanted people not to wear masks because he wanted first responders to have them first. I believe that when government scientists and health experts allow politics to trump the science, it does enormous damage to the willingness of the American people to believe anything they have to say. I think one of the aspects of yesterday's decision that illustrates the arbitrariness of this is the brand new decree that everyone in schools must wear, wear a mask. Doesn't matter if you're vaccinated or not, if you enter a school, you must wear a mask. Now, there's no great new scientific discovery that mandates this new edict. Indeed, we've seen throughout this crisis that while COVID-19 can be very, very serious for vulnerable po uh, populations, for the very elderly, for those with significant comorbidities, that we've seen the incidence of serious disease with COVID-19 among children is very, very low. And there's no credible demonstration that children are, are a significant vector for spreading the disease. But CDC nonetheless said anyone who steps in a, in a school must be masked. It's not complicated why. They did so because the teacher union bosses demanded that. That is a political decision. Political players can make political decisions. It wouldn't surprise me to see elected officials deciding I'm going to give the union bosses what they demand. But that is not what the Center for Disease Control should be doing. My view on COVID is it is serious. We should take serious steps to combat it. We have taken extraordinary steps to combat COVID-19, including an unprecedented effort to develop vaccines, hundreds of millions of which have been administered as we've come together and fought against this disease. But we've also seen stupid policies. We've seen lockdowns across this country that have shut down small businesses, destroyed restaurants, destroyed bars, destroyed, destroyed generational businesses. We've seen schools shut down. Tens of millions of children sent home for over a year. Children who are falling behind academically, who are falling behind in reading, who are falling behind in math. And the children being hurt are disproportionately low income. They are disproportionately Hispanic and African American. And nonetheless, the edicts to shut down schools have continued. They were utterly unjustifiable. My view is simple. We should not have mandates. What does that mean? That means no mask mandates. 
That means no vaccine mandates. And I will say, you know, it was interesting as I was reading through this COVID bill, Section 107, talking about what foreign governments are doing. An awful lot of the description of foreign governments can, can apply to our own government. So Section 107 of this bill says certain foreign governments have taken measures in response to COVID-19 that violate the human rights of their citizens without clear public health justification. Well, I think you could delete the word foreign in that because we've seen governments here domestically arbitrarily exercising power as well. This Section 107 also says governments using the COVID-19 pandemic as a pretext for repression have undermined democratic institutions, check, debilitated institutions for transparency and public integrity, check, quashed legitimate dissent. I might remind you that Anthony Fauci in those emails asked Facebook to silence anyone who said anything different than the government directive on speech, including if you suggested the origin of the Wuhan virus was actually in Wuhan, China, in a Chinese government lab. And Facebook willingly complied, censored that view. You're not allowed to have that view that this escaped from the government lab. Then, miraculously, a couple of months ago, the administration was forced to recognize, well, yeah, there's actually very significant evidence that the Wuhan virus escaped from a Chinese government lab in Wuhan. And beyond that, that it may well have been developed with government research with American taxpayer funding on gain-of-function research. Those views that were banned for a year are now acknowledged as having very significant scientific basis behind them. My view, there should be no mandates, no mask mandates, no vaccine mandates, and no vaccine passports. And what my amendment focuses on is just the last piece of it, vaccine passports. And I will say, finally, this should be a proposition that is bipartisan. The Biden administration at least claims to oppose vaccine passports. Jen Psaki at the White House said, let me be clear on this. I know there's a lot of questions. Psaki said, the government is not now, nor will we be supporting a system that requires Americans to carry a credential. If that is right, if that is credible, then I would urge the committee to adopt my amendment prohibiting U.S. taxpayer funds from going to or the American government participating in an international body creating a vaccine passport that would be required for Americans traveling abroad. I have a number of questions and concerns about the substance of this amendment. However, the text of this amendment is clearly outside the scope of the Foreign Relations Committee's jurisdiction. Indeed, the text is drawn directly from S-1932, a bill sponsored by the senator from Texas that has been referred to the HELP Committee. This amendment prohibits the use of federal funds for the creation of a vaccine passport system or vaccine track tracking database, including at the state level, and it requires that COVID-19 vaccination records be destroyed by all federal departments and agencies. Neither of these issues fall within our committee's jurisdiction. Accordingly, I rule this amendment out of order. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman. Senator from Texas. Mr. Chairman, I think that jurisdictional argument is... Uh, not justifiable based on the underlying bill. Uh, the underlying bill is about policies engaging in a bilateral basis in response to COVID. This amendment is prohibiting participating in an international organization creating a vaccine passport. This bill talks about vaccine monitoring. Uh, and this amendment set ensures that we're not establishing a federal government vaccine database that is monitoring U.S. citizens in violation of their privacy rights. This bill talks about enhancing transparency of health data, and, and I think the amendment would protect the privacy of health data uh, from a vaccine passport. Uh, and this bill also talks about establishing partnerships with the private sector to improve pandemic preparedness and response. Uh, this amendment addresses the same topic, to prevent the U.S. government from working with a third party in the private sector to develop a vaccine passport and force it on the American people. And so accordingly, I, I appeal the ruling of the chair that the amendment is out of order. The Senator appears the ruling of the chair that the amendment is not in order because it is outside of this committee's jurisdiction. The question for the committee is, shall the decision of the chair be overturned? A yes vote means you wish to follow the, uh, to allow the amendment 
A no vote means you agree with the chair that the amendment should not be allowed. As such, I will vote no.